Long gone are the days when only nations competed in space exploration, like the intense Cold War rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union. However, after the Cold War, private companies have increasingly taken the lead in advancing space technology. SpaceX, in particular, has been at the forefront introducing innovations such as reusable rockets and ambitious projects like the Starlink satellite constellation. However, SpaceX is no longer the only player in the space market. United Launch Alliance has been a key participant, especially for government and defense missions. The recent launch of the United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket in January marked a significant milestone in space exploration. The Vulcan rocket is ULA's first new launch vehicle design since the company's inception in 2006. It incorporates technologies developed for the Atlas V and Delta IV rockets, signifying an evolution in ULA's design and engineering prowess. Featuring the Centaur upper stage, an upgraded variant of the Centaur III used on Atlas V, the Vulcan Centaur aims to provide unmatched flexibility and endurance for complex orbital missions. The Vulcan's first stage is powered by two BE-4 engines from Blue Origin, chosen after a competitive selection process in 2018. Additionally, the Vulcan Centaur can be equipped with up to six solid rocket boosters, enhancing its payload capacity significantly compared to previous ULA rockets. And recently, there's been a lot of talk about the possibility of ULA being sold. Over the last year, it's become more and more clear that Boeing and Lockheed Martin, two companies that own ULA, are thinking about selling their rocket business. This idea got even more attention last week when the CEO, Tori Bruno, showed a presentation that seemed like it was made to help sell the company, with slides that looked like they were prepared for buyers. Back in December, we heard about three main companies interested in buying ULA, Jeff Bezos' space company Blue Origin, the big investment firm Cerberus, and the aerospace company Textron. But even after Yule's new Vulcan rocket had a successful first launch in January, which many thought would speed up the sale, there hasn't been any news on who might be the leading buyer or if anyone has decided not to bid. However, sealing the deal on a sale hasn't been easy. The main problem is finding a buyer who can both improve how ULA works and spend money on new ideas to keep it competitive. At first, ULA's owners wanted over $4 billion for the company. But financial experts think a fair price is more like $2 billion to $2.5 billion. This lower price shows how tough the competition is in the market for big rockets, with ULA's Vulcan rocket just starting to show what it can do. There's talk about who might buy ULA, including a surprising idea that SpaceX could be interested. The idea of SpaceX buying ULA might seem unlikely, because SpaceX is already a big player in the space market and taking over a competitor like ULA could be complicated. However, this possibility is being discussed mainly because the other potential buyers, Blue Oregon, Cerberus, and Textron, might not be willing or able to pay enough for ULA. On the practical side, if SpaceX were to buy ULA, it could mean less competition for SpaceX. In business, it's not unusual for bigger companies to buy smaller ones to reduce competition and risk. By acquiring ULA, SpaceX could control more of the market, which could lead to setting better prices and schedules for their launches. Also, buying ULA could give SpaceX access to ULA's contracts with the U.S. government and military, which are very valuable. This would not only bring more business to SpaceX, but also make its income more stable and diverse. Furthermore, SpaceX could benefit from ULA's technology and experience. ULA is known for its reliable and precise launches, so SpaceX could improve its own services by using ULA's technology and know-how. Blue Origin, the biggest of the three potential buyers, has had its own problems lately and might not be in a good position to buy another big company right now. They need to sort out their own issues first. Cerberus and Textron also might find it hard to buy ULA because they would need to invest a lot of money, not just to buy it, but to keep it growing and competing with others in the space industry. The recent launch of the Vulcan rocket is expected to make the sale of ULA easier. The rocket carried Astrobotic Technologies' Peregrine Lunar Lander, which included 20 payloads, five of which were for NASA. 
Vulcan is expected to replace ULA's Atlas V and Delta IV rockets. The CEO of ULA shared his amazement at the Vulcan rocket's first flight, calling it the cleanest first flight he has ever seen. This remark might hint at a competitive edge over SpaceX's Starship, especially since their initial flights faced challenges. Bruno's comment subtly places Vulcan in direct competition with Starship, suggesting that ULA's entry could be a strong contender. However, despite the successful deployment, the mission encountered challenges. The Paragon lander, which was one of the payloads, experienced difficulties after separating from Vulcan. The lander failed to orient itself correctly toward the sun, which led to a rapid decline in its battery levels. The team worked diligently to regain control of the spacecraft and recharge its batteries. Although the lander remains in Earth's orbit, the focus shifted to maximizing the collection of scientific data and information. This issue poses a significant challenge to the spacecraft's planned soft landing on the moon, initially scheduled for February 23, 2024, with 20 payloads on board. The lander's inability to maintain the correct orientation in space threatens its capacity to carry out the intended moon landing, impacting the mission objectives. During the launch, the Vulcan rocket's performance was notable for its use of a modern propulsion system that runs on methane and liquid oxygen. However, a key part of the Vulcan's success is its use of Blue Origin's BE-4 engines. You might think that Ule did most of the work on the rocket, but surprisingly, the engines, which they got from Blue Origin, are among the most complex and expensive parts of the rocket. This complexity comes from the need for the engines to withstand extreme conditions such as high temperatures and pressures while maintaining precise performance during the launch. Now, to talk about the advancements in rocket engines and not mention SpaceX would be quite unfair. SpaceX started its engine development with the Merlin engines for the Falcon rockets. Initially, the Merlin 1A powered the Falcon 1 rocket, marking SpaceX's entry into rocket engine. This engine, however, was quickly succeeded by the Merlin 1B. Following the Merlin engines, SpaceX embarked on the development of the Raptor engine, a more advanced propulsion system designed for the Starship spacecraft. The Raptor engines use methane and liquid oxygen, differing from the Merlin engines RP-1 and liquid oxygen combination. This switch to methane is strategic, considering the potential for producing methane on Mars, aligning with SpaceX's goals for future Mars missions. The Raptor engines are designed with a full-flow staged combustion cycle, a complex yet efficient process that enhances the engine's performance by fully gasifying the fuel and oxidizer in separate pre-combustion chambers before combustion. This design is a departure from the simpler gas generator or staged combustion cycles used in many other rocket engines and contributes to the Raptor's higher efficiency and thrust. The Raptor engine's development began with the Raptor 1, introduced in February 2018. The Raptor 1 aimed for a vacuum-specific impulse of around 382 seconds, with a thrust capability of approximately 3 meganewtons, or about 670,000 pounds of force, at a chamber pressure of around 300. These specifications positioned the Raptor 1 as a powerful and efficient engine for its time, suitable for the ambitious mission SpaceX envisioned. Over the course of three years, SpaceX produced 100 units of Raptor 1. SpaceX introduced the Raptor 2 engines in 2022, and within a year, they had manufactured 200 units, doubling the output rate from the Raptor 1 era. By November 2022, this efficiency had further improved, with SpaceX achieving a production rate of one engine per day. The transition to Raptor 2 brought several improvements over the Raptor 1, notably in terms of design simplification, performance, and manufacturability. One of the most significant changes was in its thrust capability and efficiency. The Raptor 2 produces a thrust of around 230 tons. This was achieved by opening the engine's throat, allowing more propellant to flow through and increasing the thrust. The chamber pressure itself saw an increase to 300 bar up from 250 bar, setting a record for the highest main combustion chamber pressure of any rocket engine. 
Despite the increase in power, Raptor 2 is lighter than Raptor 1, weighing in at 1,000 or 600 keelers compared to Raptor 1's 2,000 keeler. Raptor 2's design also saw a reduction in external plumbing and sensors compared to Raptor 1, moving towards a cleaner look. However, SpaceX recently revealed their Raptor 3 engines, making both the Raptor 1 and Raptor 2 look like nothing in comparison. The Raptor 3 has pushed the boundaries even further by achieving a groundbreaking 350 bar of chamber pressure and producing an astounding 269 tons of thrust. This represents an impressive 17% increase in thrust over the Raptor 2, which itself was a significant advancement over the Raptor 1. The advancements in the Raptor 3 engine don't just stop at increased thrust. SpaceX has continued its tradition of streamlining and weight reduction, potentially shaving off an additional 200 kilograms from the engine's weight. This reduction would not only enhance the performance of the Super Heavy Starship, but also significantly reduce the overall weight of the rocket by 8 tons for the 40 engines used across its first and second stages. If SpaceX can produce one Raptor 2 engine per day, the streamlined design of Raptor 3 could enable the production of multiple engines within the same time frame. Musk has stated about the costs of the Raptor 3, highlighting that its production cost is approximately half that of the Raptor 1. With the Starship Super Heavy Booster equipped with 33 Raptor engines, this cost efficiency translates into a total thrust capacity of 19.5 million pounds. When compared to other famous rockets, this figure is extraordinary. For instance, the Saturn V, the powerhouse behind the Apollo moon missions, generated 7.6 million pounds of thrust. This means the Super Heavy exceeds the Saturn V's capacity by over 2.5 times. This level of thrust capacity makes the Starship Super Heavy booster a formidable force. Even when looking at modern rockets, such as SpaceX's own Falcon Heavy, which delivers around 5.1 million pounds of thrust, the Super Heavy's capabilities are nearly quadruple. Some critics have pointed out that SpaceX and Musk might be wasting too much time and money into developing their own engines instead of using existing engines like United Launch Alliance or ULA does with its rockets. However, there are several advantages to SpaceX's approach. Firstly, by developing their own engines, SpaceX retains full control over the design, manufacturing process, and operational capabilities of their rockets. This allows for rapid iteration and improvements based on testing and flight data, something that can be significantly slower when relying on third-party engines due to contractual constraints. Secondly, SpaceX's in-house development of engines like the Raptor allows for significant cost reductions over time. Initially, the investment in research and development might seem high, but the ability to iteratively improve the engines based on direct experience and to scale manufacturing in-house can lead to lower costs per engine unit. Furthermore, designing engines specific to their missions and vehicles, such as the Raptor engine for the Starship, allows SpaceX to optimize performance and reusability in ways that might not be possible with off-the-shelf engines. The Raptor engine, for example, is designed with the specific goal of supporting missions to Mars, with features like full-flow staged combustion for efficiency, and the use of methane that can potentially be sourced on Mars for fuel. Each Starship requires 39 Raptor engines, including 36 for the Super Heavy Booster and 3 for the Starship itself. Given SpaceX's goal of conducting over a thousand launches per year, the demand for Raptor engines is astronomical. The ability to produce engines at a rapid pace is essential to meet this demand, especially considering the company's strategy of reusability, which, while reducing the need for new engines, cannot fully eliminate it. There is speculation that the Raptor 3 engines might be used in the upcoming third flight of the Starship, expected to occur in February. If indeed Raptor 3 engines are utilized, this launch will serve as a critical demonstration of their performance under actual flight conditions. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next